I'm Suzanne Jackson, an assistant professor in the Dalalana School of Public Health. I have the lead for the Masters in Global Health Concentration at the Dalalana School, and I'm head of the WHO Collaborating Centre in Health Promotion here at the University of Toronto. So I'm going to talk about health promotion in particular, starting with um, the Ottawa Charter in 1986. It was the first World Health Organization conference that talked about health promotion and at that conference they identified five areas of action. And each of those areas can be thought of as really looking at an, a nested interlocking series of um, levels for, uh, for affecting health. So there is a focus on developing personal skills, which is the very individual level, but then it talks about the need to strengthen community action, to, to um, create supportive environments, and then to look at healthy public policy. The public policy, supportive environment, community action, and individual skills really form a, a series of inter, interacting, interrelated levels that affect the health of any person. And what it means is that health promoters operate at, at the policy level, at coming up with strategies that um, would make the, the, the lifestyle choice the easier choice, that they would um, focus on um, strengthening communities and community interrelations and the social and cultural um, interactions that people have because the, all of those factors affect people's health. So it's a very strong emphasis on social determinants of health and um, the uh, and, a, and a caring for the equity of distribution of health and um, focusing on all of these levels. There have been a series of conferences since 1986 and in 2007 there was a conference in Bangkok which talked about health promotion in a globalizing world. So at this point people in the field are really beginning to think um, at a much more global level about what health promotion is about. Keeping in mind that between 1986 and 2007 in that 20 year period health promotion around the world has basically been following the same kind of principles and using the Ottawa Charter as their main guide. So there's a lot of consistency in what people are doing all around, um, all around the world. So there are major healthy settings movements in healthy municipalities, healthy schools, healthy workplaces, healthy hospitals. All of those movements have a lot of consistency um, in different parts of the world. And, and people look to, to Canada and to other countries are, uh, for ideas in health promotion because they're um, because we've had some uh, some leadership in that area but also because there's a lot of exchange so when the Bangkok car Charter um, was created we we're already thinking in a globalized way about health promotion but this this took it to another level so here's where we're thinking about putting health promotion onto the global development agenda. This is trying to get it onto the financial um, discussions that are being held between different countries or trade discussions and really thinking about promoting health as part of those discussions. Um, the second one was to talk about putting health promotion as a core responsibility for all of government. This has either been called a whole of government approach or a health in all policies approach, or a healthy public policies approach. All of those ideas are really with, with um, an eye to having policies in different sectors that affect health, like the trade policy, or like an agriculture policy, or like a transportation policy. All of these policies affect people's health. And this is down at the individual level. The third area in the Bangkok Charter was to talk about putting health promotion as a key focus for communities and civil society. So as we're developing the civil society um, aspects of, of different, uh, different countries, that we would be thinking about the health promoting aspects of, of doing that kind of work. And then an area that's been neglected and where a lot of us spend many parts of our days um, is in the workplace. So the idea that we're actually focusing a lot of attention on governments but not necessarily enough on the corporate sector 
there was attention at the Bangkok conference on um, putting health promotion into um, as a requirement for good corporate practice, and this was to begin to um, make, to build relations with people in the corporate sector. All of this is to say those are very large level. Um, when thinking about health promotion in a globalized world, these are very large level. Um, concepts. And you're really thinking about the policies between countries, policies within a country, what's happening at the community, and all of those things are affecting individual health. One of the pieces in the original Ottawa Charter was talking about reorienting health services. This particular aspect has been somewhat neglected. Um, other, as you can tell, a lot more attention has been paid on the, the, the other um, aspects of the Ottawa Charter. But reorienting health systems and thinking about health systems is really looking at the health system as more than just hospitals. It's primary care, secondary and tertiary care, it's community health, public health, um, and health promotion which can bridge between social services as well as health and other, other sectors. All of these parts are part of the health system. They all are interacting and helping to create health. And with that in mind, it's again looking at this um, nested series of levels um, that, that we should recognize that the health system is a part of that and the health system should also see itself as a, as a series of different levels operating to work with the health of an in, uh, from individuals to communities to the whole of society and then looking at the interactions between us in high income countries and people in low and middle income countries. So I think for students who um, are starting out a career in global health, um, one of the things that I would really hope that they would remember is to think about the importance of really looking at this political, economic, um, social determinants of health context, the very broadest levels, and understand the interactions and um, interrelationships between these different levels and how they affect whatever kind of problem you're looking at, whether you're looking at an individual problem, a family problem, a community problem, or even a, a small region or district problem, they're all going to be part of a larger series of interacting systems and levels. And that's the the uh, really important message, I think, from health promotion is that kind of um, understanding of these different interactive levels.